Welcome back, fellow Awakeners, and Happy New Year. So glad you could be here with us today. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what we're going to be learning over the next seven weeks. But before we do that, let's go ahead and turn to our neighbors, say hello, give them a high five elbow. <laughs> All right. So for the next seven weeks, we're going to be discovering a little bit more about our awesome God. Awesome. Right? Can't wait. And the Bible states that God created everything. Mm-hmm. So he created the plants, the animals, the mountains, the stars, mm. the moon. He created it all. You know what else he created? You. you. And you. you. <laughs> and you. And all of us, right? So everything God creates has a purpose. From the creepy cockroach to the annoying bully at school, right? Yeah, that's true. So let's discover this amazing God together. I cannot wait to jump right in, but first, let's take some time to worship with some of our friends here at Awaken. So get up, get energized, and of course, don't forget to stretch. There we go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> in my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore.
job, everybody. Yeah. So, great worship, but we all know what's coming next. So stay up, stay ready, because next we got up, my man, the one and only MC, MC Biblical. Biblical. All right, here we go. <laughs> MC Biblical. Get you pumped up. I know. Every single time, right? Yep. MC Biblical did an amazing job as always. But now let's dive right into today's lesson on creation. So let's get our Bibles out and we're going to read Genesis 1, 1 through 5 together. Today I have our adventure Bible. Do you have yours ready? Here we go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth didn't have any shape and it was empty. There was darkness over the surface of the waves. At that time, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and called the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning. It was day one. Well, I guess that's what you could call a fresh start. Yeah, right? yeah that's true. <laughs> So for the next part of our lesson, we're going to focus on Jonah and Jonah chapters one and two. So open your Bibles again and let's read it with me. Okay, are we ready? A message from the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. The Lord said, go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it. The sins of its people have come to my attention. But Jonah ran away from the Lord. He headed to Tarshish. So he went down to the port of Joppa. There he found a ship that was going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went on board. 
Then he sailed for Tarshish. He was running away from the Lord. But the Lord sent a strong wind over the Mediterranean Sea. A wild storm came up. It was so wild that the ship was in danger of breaking apart. All of the sailors were afraid. Each one cried out to his own God for help. They threw the ship's contents into the sea. They were trying to make the ship lighter, but Jonah had gone below deck. There he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went down to get him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call out to your God for help. Maybe he'll pay attention to what's happening to us. Then we won't die. Here's what the sailors said to one another. Someone is to blame for getting us into all this trouble. Come, let's cast lots to find out who it is. So they did, and Jonah was picked. They asked him, what terrible thing have you done to bring all this trouble on us? Tell us, what do you do for a living? Where do you come from? What is your country? What people do you belong to? He answered, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord. He is the God of heaven. He made the sea and the dry land. They found out he was running away from the Lord. That's because he had told them. Then they became terrified. So they asked him, how could you do a thing like that? The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied. Then it will become calm. I know it's my fault that this terrible storm has come on you. But the men didn't do what he said. Instead, they did their best to row back to land, but they couldn't. The sea got even rougher than before. They, then they cried out to the Lord. They prayed, please, Lord, don't let us die for taking this man's life. After all, he might not be guilty of doing anything wrong. So don't hold us responsible for killing him, Lord. You always do what you want to. Then they took Junah, Jonah and threw him overboard, and the stormy sea became calm. The men saw what had happened. Then they began to have great respect for the Lord. They offered a sacrifice to him, and they made promises to him. Now the Lord sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, When I was in trouble, I called out to the Lord, and he answered me. When I was deep in the place of dead, I called out for help, and you listened to my cry. You threw me deep into the Mediterranean Sea. I was deep down in its waters. They were all around me. All your rolling waves were sweeping over me. I said, I have been driven away from you, but I will look again toward your holy temple in Jerusalem. I'd almost drowned in the waves. The deep waters were all around me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I sank down to the bottom of the mountains. I thought I had died and gone down into my grave forever. But you are the Lord, my God. You brought my life up from the very edge of the pit of death. When my life was nearly over, I remembered you, Lord. My prayer rose up to you. It reached you in your holy temple in heaven. Some people worship the worthless statues of their gods. They turn away from God's love for them. But I will sacrifice a thank offering to you. And I will shout with thankful praise. I will do what I have promised. I will say, Lord, you are the one who saves. The Lord gave the fish a command and it spit Jonah up onto dry land. Wow, that is uh, that's one amazing story. <laughs> yeah, it was quite about the story. Jonah and God, and one thing you can take from it, there was a lot happening there. But what you can learn from it is that God gave Jonah a fresh start, even after he purposely ran away from God. Mm -hmm. God asked him to travel north mm -hmm. to Nineveh and talk to people, talk to them basically about their sins. But he didn't think that they deserved God's forgiveness. So he decided to go a whole nother direction and basically disobey what God wanted him to do. But that wasn't for him to decide. That was, that was God's choice to send him there and he disobeyed. Mm -hmm. But like we talk about, God forgave him and gave him that chance. That's the same for us. God calls for us to forgive people. No matter what they've done, we always just want to forgive people. So hopefully we live by that example and we don't get swallowed up by any fish, right? <laughs> yeah. But we still want to pay attention to the story of Jonah and what it's taught us about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to hear a joke? Uh, absolutely. What God asked Jonah, what is he doing in the belly of a fish? And Jonah said, I don't know. it's Nineveh business. <laughs> Nineveh, get it? 
because he was supposed to go to Nineveh. I get it. I All get right. it. <laughs> so, um, thank you for the joke. Yeah. So, let's go over the three things that we should take away from this lesson. So, first, you cannot run away from God no matter where you go. He is always here and he's always looking over all of his children. Number two, God loves everyone, even the wicked. Even the people in Nineveh, he loved them. And then last but not least, third, God will always forgive us if we pray and ask for it. Jonah was swallowed by a fish. He spent time alone thinking about what he had done, asked God forgiveness, and that's exactly what he got. After he learned his lesson, God got him to dry land and gave him a second chance. Do you think he'll ever eat sushi again? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I love sushi, but that might change how I would feel about it. Uh, yeah, living inside it for three days. Exactly. <laughs> and three nights. So, well, thank you guys. We're glad you could be here with us today to learn about these lessons in Jonah. Mm -hmm. But before you take off, we want you to stick around. We're going to have some after questions to see if you can remember what we talked about Ooh. today. But before we do that, let's go ahead and bow our heads for prayer. Okay. Ready? Lord, thank you for your, thank you for allowing us to be here today to share in your word. Thank you for your forgiveness and being the light and the example in our lives to show us the way through forgiveness. Please help us to keep that forgiveness in our hearts as we start this new year and live by your example. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye. Bye.